Pokemon is a game targeted at children, but under the hood it has quite a few things going on that would leave inexperienced players puzzled at how the game operates at high level play. With that being said, over the generations, Pokemon has slowly been improving the game by taking a look at what's too strong in competitive play and adjusting it. Unfortunately, Pokemon doesn't have balance patches, so we only get a metagame shakeup when the newest game comes out. What I want to do in this series is take a look at the history of nerfs done to moves, Pokemon, and mechanics as a whole. Each episode, we'll be taking a look at different generational jumps, so if you're excited to learn about how the game has changed over the years, be sure to leave a like and comment down below what nerfs you wish never happened. Before we get into that, this video is brought to you by Ewin Racing. Some of you may have noticed in my recent live streams that I got a new comfy looking chair. Well, this product was actually provided to me by Ewin Racing. They have a wide variety of chairs and desks that can fit whatever setup you have in your gaming space or office. The one they sent me is the Champion Series Ergonomic Computer Gaming Office Chair. It's super comfy and it was a breeze to put together, even for someone who isn't the smartest like me. Okay, POV, you are moxie boosted. I just got sent this chair from Ewin Racing and I'm really, really excited to try it out. Um, let me actually show you my daily driver chair in my bathroom. Look at this. Look at this. It, like, this is ergonomically nice, but man, it is a mess. Like I literally dug it out of the trash. This is the package. Uh, there's a hanger in there because I already opened it while I was cleaning the room. The room's actually spectacular, absolutely spotless, that, uh, except for the where I put all the garbage. It turns out what I thought was like a pamphlet is actually the instruction manual, so I guess we'll be following this to a T. Okay, almost done. I got the entire bottom half assembled and the top half assembled. Now I just have to put one on top of the other and then I can finally be a real streamer because I have a gamer chair. Okay, I'm, I'm a little bit scared to sit down because I never trust my own craftsmanship, but let's, let's do it. Oh, don't, ooh, ooh. Okay, this is kind of nice. This might be the nicest chair I've ever owned. Hold on, check this out. Look how far back I can go. Look at this. I can, I can, there's the mess of the, of the assembly, but look, I can like go all the way, all the way back. This is kind of cool. This is, a, this is a nice chair. The chair has a ton of great features. It's got 4D armrests, so you can adjust them to whatever position makes you most comfortable. It's made from breathable perforated PU leather and can hold up to 400 pounds, while the competition can bear 300 pounds at most. This one's for the big boys in my audience. Also, before they sent me the product, I did some research and saw some reviews of people who used it for an extended period of time. Yeah, this thing's built to last while the other gaming chairs are definitely of a lower quality. I highly recommend this product as it's been great for keeping me comfortable whether I'm streaming or cramming for my next physics exam. Be sure to use code MOXIE at checkout for 20% off and to click through my affiliate link in the description. By supporting these products, you're also supporting my channel. With that, let's get into the video. This series is focused on nerfs that affected VGC, so we'll be starting at the jump between Gen 4 and 5 and Gen 5 and 6. Now, something you'll notice as the series progresses is that Pokemon has been reworking the game more and more as the generations go on, with less attention being paid earlier on and more attention being paid later on, so this is likely going to be the shortest video in the series. There are really only two nerfs that happened in the Gen 4 to 5 jump. While some moves lost PP, that really isn't what we're looking for here. The first nerf could almost be considered a rework. The move Faint is a move that breaks the protection on a Pokemon using the move Detect or Protect, allowing a partner Pokemon to hit them. However, in Generation 4, the move was 60 base power and required that the Pokemon getting targeted click Protect for the move to work. In Gen 5, this was changed to make it so the move was only 40 base power, but now the move would work regardless of if the target was protecting. So kind of a buff, kind of a nerf, we'll call it a rework. The changes actually led to Faint being considered quite a good move in competitive play today. Pokemon like Raichu and Hitmontop are able to use the move on supportive sets to allow their partner Pokemon to deal major damage despite a Protect. And the priority allows it to function as a move to pick off Pokemon with Focus Sashes that may be faster than them. I'm already off track here, this is a nerf video and the first thing we actually talked about was basically a buff, my bad guys. The other notable nerf was to Explosion. In Gen 4 and below, Explosion actually did damage after temporarily having the target's defense stat, so the 250 base power move was effectively a 500 base power move, dealing massive damage to even resisted targets. Surviving an Explosion was quite the rare occurrence. In Gen 5, the defense having effect was removed, making the move work as advertised, and now the user would actually faint before dealing damage. While Explosion was never a super common move in VGC, this nerf made it an even riskier gamble. There haven't been many viable users of the move in VGC, but there were a few Explosion Sovali teams that did well once in a while in 2017. 
Notably, Nathaniel Sittler, who was the runner-up at the Senior Division 2017 North American International Championships. With Gen 4 out of the way, we can now get into the meat of this video, which is the jump from Gen 5 to Gen 6. This can be considered the first generation where Pokemon took a real look at the state of competitive play and reworked many moves and mechanics to better suit a balanced metagame. Let's start with the biggest ones. In Generation 5, abilities like Drought, Drizzle, Sandstream, and Snow Warning caused weather effects to be on the field permanently unless interrupted by another weather setting move or ability. In Gen 6, this was reworked to have the weather last only 5 turns unless the user is holding one of the rocks that extended to 8 turns. While this effect made weather less potent, it didn't make it any less prominent in competitive play, as weather was still a very powerful mechanic to abuse on a team. It just became a little bit more easy to play around. As you can see here, the top 5 teams in the 2013 World Championships almost all made use of some sort of weather setter. Honestly, the Pokemon that this nerf hit the hardest was definitely Abomasnow, as it just hasn't seen the same level of competitive play as it used to when Hail was permanent. Also, every other weather setter still sees heavy play in VGC today. In Gen 5, there were a number of gems that a Pokemon could hold. These items boosted the power of a particular type of move by 50% once per game. A common user of this was Tornadus, who could hold a flying gem and use acrobatics to consume the gem before the move activates, effectively giving it a 165 base power flying move. These gems were common in competitive play as they essentially provided the same bonus as a choice item but once per game and it still allowed the user to select other moves like Protect or Trick Room. In Gen 6 onward, every gem except for the normal gem was removed, and the gem's power was reduced to be only 30%. This item was not common in competitive play from this point onward, and is only really used on very niche Pokemon. Notably, these would be Pokemon like Explosion Sil Valley, or an unburdened fakeout Pokemon like Hitmonlee, which isn't common in competitive whatsoever nowadays. Sleep also received a very necessary nerf in Generation 6. In Gen 5, Sleep was even more powerful than it is currently. While in Generation 5 you could burn a turn of sleep timer, then switch the Pokemon out and back in, the game would still remember what turn of sleep the Pokemon was on, allowing you to continue with that timer and eventually wake up. In Gen 5, this was not the case. Pokemon sleep timer would reset if you switched them out, basically meaning that if a sleeping Pokemon hit the field, they were guaranteed to be a sitting duck. Pokemon with access to Spore like Amoongus and Breloom were staples of VGC that could ruin your chances of winning if you weren't prepared to deal with them. Speaking of sleep, this generation made all Grass-type Pokemon immune to Powder moves, which is sort of an indirect nerf to sleep. Question: Have you ever played against Gen 5 Thunder Wave? It's pretty strong and annoying. With 100% accuracy and the ability to paralyze even Electric types, it was quite the nuisance. We'll address that little accuracy issue in the next episode, but for now we can acknowledge the indirect nerf given in Gen 6 when all Electric-type Pokemons were made immune to paralysis. While Thunderous was very common in Gen 5 VGC, the nerf to Thunder Wave didn't really affect its viability as Paralysis to this day is still a busted mechanic and has the potential to completely turn the tide of a battle. We don't call it yellow magic for nothing. Also, Thunderous is just getting better and better by the generations, it's actually quite scary. Take a look at Gen 8 Thunderous if you don't believe me. We have just a few more nerfs to cover, but this one often gets overlooked in terms of its effect on competitive play. Steel types losing their resistance to dark type moves is quite the big nerf to steel types. While previously Pokemon like Metagross were able to shrug off moves like Knockoff, that is no longer the case. Mostly because the move is now super effective against it, but also because Knockoff received a massive buff in Generation 6. By the way, let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a video series on the history of competitive Pokemon buffs. While other big steel types didn't really get hit as hard as this, Pokemon like Heatran, Excadrill, and Scizor definitely didn't enjoy losing a resistance. Finally, we have the last major nerf to cover in this video. Special attacks as a whole received a nerf across the board. It's been such a long time since this nerf occurred that you might not even remember that it happened. You might not even remember just how strong special moves used to be. Almost every staple special attack received a base power decrease. Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower went from 95 base power to 90 base power. Thunder, Fire Blast, and Blizzard went from 120 base power to 110. And the stat decreasing nukes of the game, Draco Meteor, Overheat, and Leaf Storm all went from 140 base power to 130. This decrease in power to special moves made them significantly less powerful in competitive play than previously, especially when you consider the fact that physical attacks have to deal with the ability Intimidate in VGC, and special attacks more or less just have to deal with Screens and Snarl, which aren't nearly as common. This nerf could be why clicking a banded knockoff in Gen 6 and onward feels so satisfying, but also it may be the knockoff buff. Really, let me know if you want to see the buff video, they're arguably more interesting than the nerfs. 
I was originally going to make this whole video series into one video, but when I took a look at just how many nerfs happened in the history of the game, I realized that would be a huge endeavor. And also, the further we go in the generations, you'll notice Game Freak caring to rework moves more and more, so like I said, this will likely be the shortest video in the series by a large margin. If you're interested to learn more about the nerfs from Gen 6 to Gen 8, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe for more. Links to my Discord, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.